I don't think of music as something I'm laying over the top of my footage. I think of it as the vessel for creating an emotional response in the viewer, which is pretty weird. <laughs> but you bear with me. You, you put a, if you put a chilled out, happy, upbeat song to your footage, whatever your footage is, surfing, fishing, exercise video, whatever your footage is, if you put a happy, chilled out song to it, I guarantee that a lot of people will get a happy, chilled out feeling from watching that. If you put a really sad, devoted song to that same footage, people are going to feel sad and tripped out by it. If you put a really epic, intense song to that same footage, I guarantee people are going to get a feeling of epicness and get goosebumps and stuff from watching it. So, the music is what controls the emotion of the film. I think of music in this way and use that to my advantage to manipulate the viewer of our morning tide films into feeling what I want them to feel. That might sound a little bit evil. <laughs> Is it evil? I don't know. It could be a little bit evil. But I'm doing it out of the goodness of my heart. I'm doing it in, in, a, in a positive way, I think. I'm not trying to upset people. I'm trying to make them happy and be stoked about fishing. So... The, the emotion that I'm always chasing is froth. Like, I want them to just be frothing really hard on fishing and mateship and releasing fish and the feeling of letting that fish go. So there, there is a little bit of thought behind the music that I write for the morning type films, and a lot of that is because I think of music in a different way. I don't think of it as a noise that I'm putting over the top of my footage to make it a little bit more interesting. I'm thinking of it as the vessel to create an emotional response from the viewer. There's a, there's a couple more things I have to talk about in this. And one of those things is if you have footage that's dead set, chilled out, you're just catching a tiny little fish and you're hanging by the river or something, there's no reason to put some really intense psycho dubstep to that. It's just, there's too much of a gap between that footage and the music you've chosen. It's much better to choose something more mellow that suits your footage. The footage has to match the music. They have to be on the same level. But there is many emotions on those different levels. You can have a really mellow song that's, that's slower and matches the pace of your footage, but it can be a happy song at a slower pace and that matches your footage. Or it can be a sad song or it can be an epic feeling song at that pace. So don't feel like the emotion you create in the viewer is limited by your footage because it's not intense enough or something. You, you'll be able to choose any song and create any emotion in that person, but it has to match the level of your footage. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. I see a lot of videos of like blaring, blaring, is that the right word? Blaring, really psycho dubstep electronic music over the top of a single shot of someone pumping wine and, and pumping and winding a fish in and it's it doesn't match I turn it off straight away it completely does my head in I, I can't handle the disconnection between the audio and the visual I want those two things really intertwined and matching I'm pretty sure almost all SoundCloud Jimmy's are frothing on you or anyone using their music as long as you tag them so if it doesn't say use this music and tag me then you just write them a message or an email and say can I use this song on a YouTube video and I'll give you a tag are you keen on that or whatever so you can use pretty much any music you want you just have to take the time to write to the person and get that song and there's a bunch of free to use music all over the internet anyway but yeah shift your mindset think about music as the vessel for creating emotion in your viewer and try and match your footage to that music as best as possible. It'll make a huge difference to your edits.
I'm at my dad's. I'm going to go in and we're going to check out this dough, bro. The, the rest of this film is going to be recording the song. I'll walk you through the process a little bit and show you what I do to record a song. Greg. This is my dad. Grandpa. The one and only. <laughs> a few packages. I get all the stuff sent to Greg because he's home and the place that I live at is pretty psycho with postage. Oh. Wait a minute. Let's open this. 12 GoPro batteries. Wow. A lot of batteries there. So, Greg has a special guitar. What's it called? It's a 1981 authentic Dobro. He is not allowed to ruin it, but he's allowed to use it. <laughs> You're watching the surfing? Yep. Who's surfing? This right here is Nat Young from Santa Cruz versus Jeremy Flores from France. Fiji, is it? Fiji, yep. This is Fiji, cloud break. You've I'm, surfed over there, haven't you? I've surfed in, at Namotu, which is the next island over. Where's the picture? There's a picture of Greg on a pretty salt, way bigger than that. Double that size. Where is it? It's in the shed, uh, isn't this, it? This is just one that somebody happened to snap from the boat. Here we go, here we go, here we go. That's pretty solid. It was a nice wave. There was a lot of nice waves at that place. That's a big wave. All right, so, 19 what? 1981. 1981. Purchased for me for a wedding gift by Aaron's mother. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't is, even know that. This is, my, this is my wedding gift from Kim. Whoa. That is a Dobro. Tune, How's the look of it? Tuned to an open E. Still in tune. I haven't tuned that in I don't know how long. But yeah, they stay in tune. You can see what kind of condition I've kept it in. It's pretty pristine. Yeah, so I better not. So you don't it. let the kitties trample on it. Yeah, yeah, I'll keep it in the case. Thanks, Apes. All right. I'll, take I'll keep it under the bed. That's a good place And then for it. when everyone leaves the house, I'll record. Okay. <laughs> and you've got a lap steel too, uh. I have three. Three. So I might have to do a little lap yeah, steel yeah, song one time. Steel sound, it's a totally different sound. Not, this. not for this song, but I'll do it for another one. Quite a different sound. Seat back a bit, or is that right? It's fine like that, I think. All right, I might track this on top of it. It's only 40 years old. 40 it's not years like old. It's, uh, it's not like too many things are going to fall apart on it after these many years. Yeah. But as you can see, I've looked after it like a tiny little baby. Yeah, I'll take care this of it. This is how you look after All it right. too. Thanks, Apes. No worries. Have a nice film. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> so, he's, uh, he's an American, actually. Both my parents are from America. I was born in Australia, but my parents are from America. And he had that dough, bro, from years ago. This this song's gonna be frontier, discovery, pioneering feeling, which a lot of my films have that, that vibe to them, which is intentional and I, I want that feel. The epic kind of feeling is also present and something I go for. You want it to feel like some epic thing that's happening, even though you're just going fishing. <laughs> <laughs> but I think a lot of people get off on that, that there is this feeling of epicness in our films and a huge, in my, in my opinion, a huge part of that is the music um, and designing the music in a way that, that gives off that feeling when you view it. So the kids are bailing, well most of the kids are bailing so I'm actually going to get to do a bit of recording today. I have to close the whole house up so there's no outdoor sounds of birds chirping, cars driving by, that kind of thing. See you later! Yeah. Yemen! I've got one kid left, but it's a quiet one. Are you a quiet one? Minecraft, nah, because I'll hear you clicking. Your fingers will click. Are you a quiet one? Do you read in the dark? Yeah. Maybe put your light on when you're reading. Just read your book. What are you reading? Nothing. Minecraft! <laughs> Wait a minute. No wonder you wanted to play Minecraft, because you're reading it. It was really cool house, and I want to make it like that. Big no no. Big daddy doing work. I love you. Usually I do it when there's no one in the house, but I gotta ma make do with what I got, mate. I got one Jimmy. Are you a Jimmy? <laughs> She's getting to be almost a teenager, and I think they get a bit hectic when they turn teenager. <laughs> Alright, so closing up all the windows. You can hear this clicking of the clock actually fully comes up when I record with the mic. So anything acoustic, I use a mic to record. I don't plug straight in. And I have to remove this and put it into another room. Nappies and shit everywhere, look at this. 
How's having kids? I'm actually a weird, neat person that likes stuff neat. But when you have kids, that all goes out the window forever. So, these are my headphones. They're good headphones. Proper good headphones. Low frequency bass is heard and the high pitch shit's heard. Leader. I plug directly into the leader with my guitar and... No. I had it. I use this. Audio box. Let's see if we can see that. This little bad boy has two inputs and I can plug in... I don't even know what the jacks are called. You can plug in the mic jack or the guitar jack style. Whatever the hell they're called. And you just got headphones out the back, which is what I use. I think it cost about $200 10 years ago when I got it. And I actually didn't even pay for it. I got it off a mate. Might have cost two or $300 back then. He gave it to me because he upgraded to a really, really psycho one. So thanks Costa for that one. That's pretty much the beginning of me recording my own music. So one person's generosity, I guess, completely changed if I was going to record my own music or not. I'd... I don't know if I would have started getting into it if it wasn't for him. But I got this lead for my mic. Where do I keep him anymore? Up here. Mic's up here. Don't drop everything else. Audio Technica. And I think this one was about 300 bucks. The exact model is AT4040. I read a lot about them before buying and this one seemed to be good value for money. I actually wanted it because I was doing screams. <laughs> I used to record screaming because I, I listen to metal, hardcore and punk and that's the music I like to play and record as well, usually. But for the morning type films, I don't. And I was screaming as well. So I bought this one to do the scream, which I haven't done for many years. But I might get back into it one day if I ever have time to just record music again and not make fishing films. Headphones out. This is my extremely complicated microphone stand, which consists of a semi heavy Wacom. That just sits like that. That's as safety and as tech as I get with my mic stand. This is a good $300 mic, but I didn't even spare 10 bucks on the stand, right? Because I could do it with this. If I couldn't do it, I'd, I'd buy the $10 stand. I have a like, $50 stand or whatever. But I can do it like this, so I, I have been doing it like this. I would love the day that I can buy some good stuff and have... A, a proper studio, like, I would love to have a proper studio. <laughs> and even just for our clothing and stuff as well, it would be sick once we can have a proper warehouse and not have to work from inside our houses. It's actually pretty good. It's not that bad. The only thing is the height of it's not very good. Then this plugs into here, into the audio box. Make sure she's plugged in. Cord. Go in here. So it's USB powered. And... I can't use this chair. Oh, it's not that bad. Yeah, there we go. Just that subtle movement. Big noisy once the mic's on. That little tiny creak is actually like a boom. So that chair's out. This chair's in. Minus a few kids clothes. And... Oh yeah, it's not too bad. It's all right to actually play here. The program I use is called Reaper. I've listened to a fair bit of country music over the last few weeks and I've got the vibe of it in my head. And of course I want to take my own spin on that and put in some heavier guitars. No matter what the, the song is, there's usually some kind of heavy bit. Not, not all of them, but it's definitely an element that I, I like to add and put my own stamp on any style of music I do. I, I get the heavy stuff in there a little bit as well. Here we go. I don't know how to film where you should be. And I don't think that's a very good zone. Maybe this is a good zone here. The wedding gift still remains, mate. And it's worth a pretty penny nowadays, apparently. Off camera, he told me why these are worth so much. And the reason is it's an original 
Dobro. Before Dobro was sold to Gibson, they changed the way they were made. I don't know if they changed the wood or they changed something, but this is an original Dobro, not the newer post 80s Gibson ones. So I think that's why it's it's worth so much. And hopefully it has a, a nice sound, a really good sound to it. Okay, so you can probably see on the screen I've selected this one little zone. There's a loop thing happening where it's just gonna record this one section and I'm gonna play the same riff over and over and over and over and over again until I get something I'm happy with. So. secret to it being in time and actually played okay in my songs is I just keep playing the same riff until I get it right and then when I've got that one little section I'm happy with I can duplicate it even to make other sections I might get it first take I might get it 300th take but that that's what this is Over the next few weeks to months, I recorded electric guitar, more acoustic stuff, like the song kind of is an organic thing that develops over time and I just keep laying down new riffs, testing different things. I really take my time with it and I don't try and rush. If, if I feel something's not working, I let something else develop and take its place. show you just the sounds how I get the guitar sounds there's these free VST plugins called Poland Poland it's like a pretend amp leak hub which is also by the same guy and he creates these free VST plugins that you can put into your audio engineering software I have drive low mid all the stuff that you'd see on a normal amp and this one sounds pretty decent and obviously you can tweak all that stuff, so no drive, can't really hear it. Or full drive, it's gonna just be fully distorted. That's the sound of the head, but then if you have a look at this fella here, there's all these impulses which I've downloaded. You can see they're like famous metal bands, like Arch Enemy, and this is the sound of their amp as I lay down, the sound of their amp, Avenged Sevenfold, there's also amps that emulate, like Marshall amps and stuff like that, so I just go along until I hear something I like the sound of for this song, and it's different every time, I never, I don't think I've ever used the same guitar sound.
<laughs> in metal <laughs> I've heard of I think 16 guitar tracks so 8 in each ear I'm sure there's more than that in some but 16 guitar tracks is a few so, so I do 2 1 in each ear and actually I have done 3 if there's a lead section as well and actually if you include the acoustics there's four, one for each ear for acoustic, one for each ear for electric, and sometimes a lead as well. So there, there might be five. The most I ever do is about five. And the bass, six. The way I do the drums is I insert this blank MIDI thing. And what I have is drum sounds input into all of these keys. So if I had a MIDI keyboard, I'd be able to actually I'd be able to play the, the song, but I don't have that. So what I do instead is place by hand the drum hits that I want. keep it quite simple. There's a few double kicks here and there, but most of it's just a really simple beat. There we go. We have hi-hats and I'll just place all of them. Might seem tedious, but you can duplicate it once you have something good. So let's just listen to this. This is a simple beat. Okay, so that, that's twice as many hi-hats as would sound good, I reckon. <laughs> so I'm going to remove every second one. Try again. Okay, I reckon I'm going to put some toms matching the kind of guitar. Dun dun dun, dun dun dun. See what that sounds like. That's too many, so we want them twice as long. I'm just going to change this to this so that when I put them in, it's going to take up the amount that I want it to to be the right timing. Let's try this. I'm going to take that further. One, two, three, four, five. The five is off. It should be here. One, two, three, four, five. You hear that timing should be a bit different. Yeah. So I'm going to match the guitar with this drum. See what that does. No, 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 no. So this. Is like this, I think. Hey. So this should go. So there should be one more here. Can you hear that? I reckon that sounds rad. So I'm happy with that little bit of drums. I can copy it. And I'm just gonna press Control V. There we go. So now I've just used that one bit of drums for this whole section. I might make variations on each of them, but that's the basic drum pattern that I'm gonna want for this zone. You can hear these ones. A 20 minute song can be pretty challenging to try and write and to try and record. A 4 minute song can be challenging. So 20 minutes is quite long. I tend to just extend everything instead of making 
many different riffs i i actually just go okay these are the core riffs and this one's going to go for five minutes and it's just slight variations on that riff building up building up until it reaches a peak and then it transitions into another riff we talk a lot in, in our films and that's something we're adding more and more of into our films because people are more interested in the human connection than they are just seeing another montage of fishing like the fishing has to be there obviously that's what draws them in but then they're wanting a deeper connection with the characters of the morning type films which is us and what that means is i need to leave room for that in the song so i need to leave a lot of talking time and a lot of story and a lot of build-up time to the intense fishing moments that then drop back down. Another pretty big element of the songs is the synth stuff. And what that is, is just a synthesizer that can create many, 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 any, I'd almost say any different sound you want. So many different sounds it can create. I use that same MIDI item, the empty MIDI item, and then I go and I place the notes by hand in all the positions that I want. I match the riff in this and I can make every anything from a piano sound to an alien farting sound. Like it can, it can seriously be anything you want, and you stumble across a lot of really cool things with this. I don't really understand it fully. I don't understand the technical side of it at all. I know the basics. I know the different like frequency ratio kind of things, and you're gonna get like wah 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 or wah 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 whatever. It has different frequencies and can run through a. Bit of, bit of noise and it creates a totally different sound. I just kind of free freestyle it. I, I go in, I, I know, have an idea of what I want. I want some deep ambient sound and I'll go in and I'll play with the knobs until I get something I like. The, it's really interesting and really fun. You, you, you can spend hours just mucking with this thing and, and coming up with cool sounds for your song. So this is a big part of it as well. And anytime you hear Anytime you hear a noise in one of my songs that isn't a guitar and isn't real, if, if it doesn't sound like a real sound, it's coming through this. So I'm making those sounds in this and I use them quite a bit. I know that GoPro audio is very mid, midi, midi and high. And what I do is I actually EQ it so that I've got my bass, I've got my treble, but the mids kind of drop down a little bit and leave room for the GoPro audio. So that's something that's pretty custom, I guess, about these songs as well, as I'm, I'm leaving room in the EQ for the GoPro to sit over the top of and have its own place. I also leave room in the pan. So from the right ear to the left ear, I kind of spread all of my instruments to the sides and then I put the GoPro audio in the middle. And that's another way to kind of have it fit in and sit into the mix a bit better. I think I just hear some pretty technical, technical audio terms just then. Sit into the mix, is that a thing? It sounded like a thing. All right, um, back to it. Yeah. I have Rhoda here. Hey. All the way from New Zealand, and he's just he's going home. When are you going home? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, Tomorrow 3 a.m. or something. Uh, 3 p.m. or something. Yeah, so there was a few days, there was a few extra days where he just had to hang around our hometown because we could, we had to leave because the mm -hmm. weather was only yeah, good. Yeah, Yeah. So, trying to entertain him a bit and he's going to, he's going to record part of the song. Big. <laughs> How much guitar have you played before? None. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think it's just going to be like an open chord, just like. He can record a few of them, and then I can place them into the song. Electric guitar, mate. You ready for this? Yeah. Rest your finger on these three, uh -huh. so it's muting. So yeah. Instead of, uh -huh. you know what I mean? So it just yeah, goes. Yeah, yeah. And then go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> How many times do I have to? You leave that. Leave it, see how it's still ringing? Yeah. And again, when it comes. That's it. This is good, this is good. Alright, it's doing big guitar. <laughs> Coming up? Yeah. That sounded good. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. sounded like a good one. 
<laughs> You've got this, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Do, do one more after this one, okay. and then I'll show you another thing to do. Yeah. Perfect. That was good. Oh, Sonny. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> Big play. <laughs> Play it! I'll do the lead, you do the rhythm. Yeah. What? The baby's asleep now, and Rod is gonna go on with just like a little octave. Got his fingers doing some skitzy octave here. He has to play the first four strings. But not those two. When he strums, so he's... M He's muting those other ones with that finger there, so they're not going to make a noise. Let's see how he goes. Ready? <laughs> What's your stage name? Stage? What's that? Your name on stage. You can have a different name. Riota. Riota. <laughs> so from L. Good. Really? Yeah, pretty good. Sounded good. It's ringing. Mm -hmm. It's ringing out nicely. Ooh. What was that? You moved? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't move. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. One more of them yeah. and you're good. That was a good one. <sighs> Let me see. Are they bent in finger? <gasps> you were pressing too hard. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> Big in the song. So he's in the film, and he's also played part of the song for this one. Yeah. Bad finger? Yeah, bad. Still, <laughs> still. When you, when you don't play very much, uh -huh. and then you start playing, yeah. man, it can be bad, eh? That's it. He yeah. nailed it. Got lots of good takes then. <laughs> Thanks, Ace, mate. You. Yeah. It's actually been months now since I started this vlog slash behind the scenes film about how I record music. And I have to record the bass. I still have to record the bass. And I usually record the bass last because I can do the edit and I can kind of find out which parts of the song are working for that edit and delete and remove the bits that aren't working. And I haven't wasted my time recording a whole nother instrument. So at the very end, once the song's finished, I'll just go in and I'll lay down the bass. The bass in my style of songs is usually just to fill, to fill out the sound. It's not really taking a lead role, except in a couple of them. That's what I'm about to do now. And this is pretty psycho. There's a lot of shit going on now. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a fair few tracks and stuff now which would have changed a lot since you last probably saw it. <laughs> Big sign for a minute. Alright, so... What have we got going here? I'm going to start from the start, really. Let's hear it. Okay, so this one's going to be pretty easy. I think I'm just going to go, just let that ring out. Like that. So I've just recorded all of the bass for the song and that's the end. That's how I make the music. I have right now, before editing this vlog, I have absolutely no idea how this is going to turn out. So I really hope that this got across the way that I record the music. And by the time this comes out, the song will be uploaded. So I'll put a link to the this exact track 
I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. I'm gonna be back into some fishing soon. I might actually go do some beach fishing with the kids. Big peepees, man. Hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to use the track or any other tracks on SoundCloud. Just give me a shout out in the description of your film. And I'll see you guys soon. Yeah.